Hey y'all, I'm gonna show you how to set up and use Adobe Connect for what most people need it for. Uh, if you're setting up meetings, if you're IT, this is too easy for you, go do something else. But if you're a regular user, this is probably what you're gonna to need to know. So first thing first, use Chrome, use Google Chrome, Chrome. Don't use Safari, don't use IE, don't use Edge, don't use any other crap, just use Chrome, okay? It just works. Use it for everything. Use it on all your devices. Secondly, you gotta get the uh, the little app. It's a small app. Uh, there's one for Mac, there's one for Windows. I'll show you both. Um, I'm not screen capping Mac, but I got one here. So first thing you gotta do, type in Adobe Connect Download, search for it, and you should see this as one of the first ones. Click it, scroll down. For Windows, for Mac. So I'm going to do the Windows one. Do you want to keep? Yep. This is going to download wherever your default downloads are. Mine's the desktop. Yours is probably the downloads folder. So go to the downloads folder. Double click connect setup. Do run. Let it do its thing here. That'll take a minute. Sorry, you just got to wait with me. All right, create start menu, create desktop shortcut. Okay, now it's on there. And you see the desktop shortcut for me since this is on the desktop just showed up. Now you can delete this thing, you don't need it. For Mac, click connect setup Mac. It's gonna download this DMG file. Adobe Connect 2019.9.2 DMG. So I got that running here on Mac 10.12.6. It should work for anything from 1012 up. Uh, should work for anything 1012 up. It'll probably work for 1010, 1011 as well, but I'm not testing that. I got 1012.6. Um, I'm pretty confident it'll work for 1013, 14, 1015. As of right now, 1015 is the newest. Uh, to install that on Mac, I can show you real quick. Not very easily, but I can show you. I know this looks like a Dell, uh, it's running Mac. So basically all you gotta do, after you download that, wee, that's tough to see, up there in the corner is that DMG file. Double click that. It's gonna open up this window and here's the Adobe Connect installer. Double click that. It's just going to install it. For mine, it says close and try again because I already installed it, but it's just going to install it. It takes like half a second and then you've got it. Uh, that's all there is to Mac. After you're done with that, you can eject the DMG image and you can delete that file. Um, there we go. One second. So you're using Chrome. You're using Chrome, you've got it installed on Windows, you've got it installed on Mac. The next thing you're gonna do is check your email for the invitation you get. Uh, you, if you're setting up your own meetings, yeah, you gotta go through some other stuff. Uh, if you do the trial, you'll have to set up your own meetings. And if people are interested, I can make you a how-to on a quick, simple way to do that. But basically, you're gonna get this email or something similar to it. There's gonna be two things. Now, I only have one of them, but there's going to be two things, typically. There's going to be the link to join the meeting, and then usually there's going to be a username and password down here as well. I don't have the username and password because I set this up the easy way. Most people do, okay? And that's a slight difference, but don't let that hang you up. So all you got to do, open up your email, open up this invitation, click the link, This is gonna come up and say, open Adobe Connect probably instantly. Now, it might pop up and ask you to type in your username and your password on the browser. If so, do that. But either way, you're gonna get this open Adobe Connect dialog from Chrome after you've installed the installer uh, and after you've clicked the meeting link. Again, you might need to put in your username and password first. So click open Adobe Connect. It's going to go through this connecting thing. 
Now I've got the English version here. If you're using a different language, clearly the settings and all that stuff are gonna be in a different language. This thing right here, don't worry about it. Just click yes, 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 yes. Basically this junk right here is just because of the, uh, I think the programming languages they're using. So just click yes through it. This is what you're gonna have. Now um, I'm the host in this one here on this computer and I'm also connected through the Mac that I showed you a minute ago. So the first two things you got to do when you get this open, um, again, you, you probably, you had to click the link. You almost certainly had to copy paste your username and password into it. But if you're just a guest, um, if it's set up like that, you can just type your name and click enter. A lot of trials are set up that way. So click the link, put in username and password. Now you got to make sure your webcam and your mic are hooked up and are on. So the first thing to do, click this and select your camera. I got a couple different ones in here. This is my default camera, so I'm going to click that. You can double check it's working by click start my webcam. Now I got another camera application open, so this isn't going to show anything right now because it's just the way the resources work. But this won't be sharing until you click start sharing. So you gotta click start sharing. Because I have camera open here, it's not showing it here. My bad. Uh, I'd have to close it and open it for it to work. I can do that in a minute. Once you get the camera working here, you'll see yourself, it's a preview. You gotta click start sharing for it to be sharing with other people if you're the host, if you're the presenter, or if you're a guest. Next thing you gotta do is select your microphone. Select mic. So this one's selected on the one that I'm gonna use. If you use a different one, you're going to have to know. You're going to have to figure it out. You can test it. You can connect to a meeting beforehand. You can use Google Hangouts. You can use some other program to test it if you need to. But make sure you got the right one. After that, click that. And now you see I'm on here. When I'm talking, you see the microphone pop up. When I'm not talking, you see it go away. Now I can take and just uh, mute. I can uncheck that to unmute it. I can turn off my webcam. I can turn on my webcam, all right? So if you wanna mute your stuff because, I don't know, whatever, you got a phone that starts ringing or whatever, just real quick, come up here, click mute. Okay, no more noise from you, right? Make sure your speakers work as well. Uh, this is what mine are set up as. Um, the speakers are gonna be on by default. The next thing you need to know about is this thing right here, participants. For instance, in this case, the participant is Adam Mack, right? Participants may want to raise their hand, agree, disagree, do whatever. So I'm gonna do that from my other one, raise hand. You see that? They get a pop-up down here, I get a pop-up right here, and you see me raising my hand. Now you may have 20, 30, 60, 80 people here, but you're gonna see people who raise their hand go to the top of the list. One thing I suggest, uh, when you get everybody on here, you should have them um, double check that they can hear you and see you by saying agree. And you can just say to them, hey, can y'all hear me? If you can hear me, click agree. Yep, I can hear you. You got a check mark there. There you go. Now, if I want to give this person microphone access, I'd have to right click and do enable mic. Oop, sorry, regular click and do enable mic or enable video. Until then, they do not have mic or video access, but they do have chat access. So for instance, there we go. You're gonna see people chatting. You're gonna see people asking questions, possibly answering questions and so on, but you're not gonna hear them. You're gonna be talking. Uh, let's see here. Sorry. You're gonna see them typing here, but you're not going to hear them unless you enable their mic. You're not gonna see them unless you enable their video. If you enable their mic, they also need to have their mic enabled on their end. They gotta do that first. So when you have students or participants or whatever enter, you need to tell them, check your mic, make sure it works first. If you're dealing with like little kids, say in a primary school setting, their parents got to do that. That's it. They're not going to be able to do it on their own. 
if you're dealing with middle school up, they should be okay. But they got to check that beforehand. If you, regardless of if this is an educational setting or something else, my recommendation is to have more than one host. Now, if you, when you get your login information as a teacher, you can log in and then your host one. Another teacher logs in and it would say Adam Dix two, Adam Dix three, Adam Dix four, or it would say uh, teacher one, teacher two, teacher three, teacher four, or if it's a different language, whatever that language is, plus a number. Um, all of those people have the same rights. They can speak, they can enable their cameras or whatever, they can enable disabled participant stuff, um, and they can answer questions. And I highly recommend you get at least two people on everything that's got more than, say, 10 participants. Because then you can have one managing questions verbally, turning on microphones, turning off microphones if you choose to do that, turning on video, turning off video. You can have the other one checking comments and answering. Um, that person can also speak up and say, hey, this guy's got a good question. Can you enable his mic so we can continue and, and talk more about that? If you're dealing with like a primary school setting, it's going to be weird and different. You're probably not going to want to enable microphones ever. But if parents want to type questions for their kids, have them type it in here. Um, I don't think it would be good to have parents talking for the kids, but if they want to type questions in there, they can, they can do that and you can answer them. To share your screen and stuff, pretty simply put, share my screen, right? So uh, I think I've just got Chrome and this camera open and stuff. So if I do share my screen, it can say I can share a particular application, in which case, you know, I choose an application and I share just that. Uh, you wouldn't share camera because you'd have one up here, but I can share, you know, Chrome or you can choose to share the whole desktop. So if I share the whole desktop, this is what's on my desktop right now. This is all the stuff that I have open. And this down here is your little controller for it. So when you're done, you click stop sharing. Now it goes back to this screen here. I know, I know this is kind of weird and confusing because I got a camera on right here. This is just the Windows camera. I'm doing this because I'm talking to you, right? Let me get rid of that for a minute. Um, one person has raised hand. Yep, that's the Mac still. I'm going to close this and open it so that you can see me here. So let's just go through opening this up again for that matter. So click in the meeting link. It's probably going to ask you to sign in first, in which case copy and paste the username and password. But after you do that and hit enter, it's going to say open connect. Adobe Connect, connecting. Click yes a whole bunch of times. Start my webcam. There I am. You see it wouldn't have worked before because I had the camera open as well. Um, you can make the webcam larger. Yeah, it's not doing it quite right on mine, but I promise you, you can. You can also have multiple people showing up on here. Um, the biggest issue that people usually have is connecting their audio, connecting their webcam. Uh, if you don't want people using audio and webcam, which makes management a little bit easier, just have them do things through comments. You know? There you go, and it's showing up over here on the Mac. Because on the Mac, I'm seeing basically the same thing, but with a few fewer options. Because the Mac is not a host, the Mac is a participant. Um, one other thing that you can do for certain grades, this might make sense, or for certain business applications or whatever, you see you can make a person a host or a presenter. When you make them a host or a presenter, they get the rights. They're able to enable people's microphones, video, whatever. Um, when you're all, ha, one other thing, one other thing, you're going to need to record these. So right at the beginning, I'm sorry I didn't mention this before, but write this note down remind yourself right at the beginning you're going to want to record this so do meeting record meeting give it a name click OK when you see this red dot up here it's recording just you know the same red dot you see when you're recording anything you can pause you can stop if you need to deal with something that's like maybe separate from your content you might want to pause recording for a second deal with that thing 
resume recording when you're getting back into it, right? Now, it's going to show on your other devices up here in the corner, uh, sorry, up here in the corner, it's going to show other participants that you're recording as well. And I highly suggest you tell people, I'm recording you, don't do anything dumb or don't do anything you don't want a million other people to see or people from your organization or from your school or whatever. Um, apart from that, when you're all done, you can do end meeting. This will give people a little message. You can customize it. Okay. Now, it shows this. Let me open the camera again. And you'll see on the Mac, uh, well, you can't see it because this camera's, you know, whatever. But right here, it says, shut up, Mac people. Okay, whatever. Um, again, I know that's a Dell, but it's Mac, trust me. Uh, that's about it. That's like the basics. you got to figure out what's going to work for you as far as classroom management stuff. Uh, or as far as if you're, this is a business or a meeting or whatever, that type of management too. My recommendation is for younger kids, give them fewer rights. Make them basically watching, less interactive. Somebody might tell me I'm wrong, in which case, whatever, do what your boss says, okay? Of course, obviously. But interactivity with younger kids is probably gonna be messy. Firstly, you got the tech issues that the parents have to solve. Secondly, you got the kids coming on there and it's gonna be a struggle. I'm gonna let you imagine how that's gonna work as a teacher because you know your kids. And if you think it'll work at, say, third grade, give it a shot. If it bombs, Okay, don't worry about it. Continue to use the comments for any interaction. Have the parents type comments that the kids are saying if you need to. And then um, continue to just do your material live as you would. For older students and certainly for adults in business, you can have more interaction. Um, something else to note. Weird sounds, environmental sounds can cause issues. Also, if a student, uh, people should use headphones and microphones if they got them. People who are participants. One problem that'll happen often is you'll enable a, a, a participant's microphone and everything starts to echo. The reason that echo is happening is when I'm talking, it comes out your speakers on your TV and it goes right back into the microphone in the webcam. So um, that, that's if people use headphones, then this, the noise is only going into their ears and it's not going back into a microphone. You don't get that echo. That echo is just super annoying and it makes it difficult to understand and to hear. And it's going to seem like, oh no, this is a technical problem. People don't know what they're doing. No, it's because they have the volume too high on their speakers and it's going into their webcam. Um, if you're using a laptop and you're getting a bunch of background noise, like whirring sound or any, something like that, uh, sometimes what happens is if these things are running hot, the fan will be making a ton of noise and it's going into the microphone. So in that case, you've got to either get a microphone extension or, or one that's away from the computer or use a different computer. Uh, you've got to get the microphone away from that noise source, basically. That's it. There's, there's no other way to solve it. I mean, you can try to clean out your computer and get the dust out of it and cool it down so it runs quieter. Okay, sure. But if it's noisy, it's noisy. Um, am I missing anything? Connect meeting. Yeah, if you have issues, let me know. I can try to fix them. The biggest issue you're going to have is with managing your audience, whether it's a classroom, whether it's a business audience, whatever. And you know that you're people, so you know if they can handle having microphones on, having video on, only using chat, not even using chat. You know that. you got to sort, sort that out and solve that and do that the best way. But hopefully this will get you connected and using the, the program correctly. So, all right, if you got questions or whatever, ask. I'll try to put links in the comments, but I'll probably forget. Thanks. Bye.